極度の薬物中毒にされた薬のために喜んでヒーローを使うように調教されたんだ We meet our hero, who is a healer named Kiaru. He wakes up from a dream and meets his guardian, Anna, whom he talks to about his goal to kill the demon lord of their land. It also appears as if Kiaru has been blessed with the sight of the spirits as he is led to an angel of the forest during the night. This angel blesses him with an overpowered eye that allows him to observe every single occurrence in the universe. Now, we are taken to a flashback where an epic battle is underway. Tensions run high as a team of mages put on a brutal display against their opponent. Who is a demon goddess. The commander of this army, Flare Jewel, uses the holy power of Thor's hammer to battle some of the shadow monsters who are serving the demon god. Unfortunately, Flare's team is no match for the unbeatable demon lord who spares no mercy whatsoever. This is when we see Kiaru, who is also a part of Flare's army as a healer. Despite having such an important role, we learn that he is being treated like a slave by Flare, so this is his chance to finally get some redemption. Hiaru quickly dodges the demon shadows and uses his healing powers to ward off a giant monster with impressive showmanship. After a brief encounter, he eventually makes it to the demon goddess and manages to defeat her as well. However, our hero senses a conspiracy with the philosopher's stone and decides to use a holy gem to cure the world. This is a daring move by Kiaru, who is about to be attacked by Flare, but he manages to use the gem to travel back in time. Upon realizing the injustices he has suffered, Kiaru decides to fulfill his ultimate fantasy which is to humiliate Flare as well as her trusted warriors, named Blade and Bullet. The next day, Flare visits the Andal village in order to recruit a new hero for her team. She notices Kiaru and chooses him as her new team member, just as he had expected. Our hero is then brought to the Imperial Castle and gets the title Hero of Recovery bestowed upon him. A cool title such as this instantly makes him a hit with the pretty maids, and then he meets a swordsman named Kira in order to assist her with her lost arm. Kiaru gets the job done but pretends to faint from a vision involving all of Kiriha's frightening memories. Flare takes this opportunity to show her true colors, but it only gives Kiaru further motivation, because he is now sure that his mistress hasn't changed from the last time he last saw her. After recuperating from the fake fainting, Kiaru throws a fit and Flare tries to act friendly with him, but he sees through her trickery and keeps up with his acting performance. Later, our hero is drugged and taken to a shady dungeon where he is tortured and made to become addicted to certain substances. It's an unpleasant experience, but Kiaru decides to go through the exact same routine so that he can keep up his act around everyone. Time passes by and Kiaru keeps healing injured soldiers, but makes sure to absorb their powers so that he can be ready for his revenge. One night, King Prome leaves urgently with his knights, so Kiaru uses this chance to escape from his prison cell. Unfortunately, he gets caught in the act by a soldier named Leonard who has no hesitation in taking him to Flare. The shady princess calls Leonard to her bedroom, possibly for a spicy reward, but she quickly learns that he is simply Kiaru in disguise. Our hero has a smirk on his face as he explains how he switched faces with Leonard which was his plan right from the start. After this, he begins his revenge mission by breaking Flare's fingers and taunting her. He takes things a bit too far but eases the pain on Flare by erasing her memories. Not only that, Kiaru also alters her face and makes her his slave, thus turning the tables. The next morning, Kiaru begins his mission to learn more about the demon goddess and also informs Flare that her new name is Freya. He also states his own name to be Kiarga to keep up with his disguise and somewhat troubling plan. The new couple sets out on their new expedition but Kiaru is distressed when he learns that Flare's sister, Norn is going to attack him out of spite for what he's done to her. A flashback shows us how Flare and her people would behave with Kiaru and it's not a pretty sight. These acts involve brutal violence inflicted by both Blade and Bullet, but we suddenly realize that all of this is a dream. Our hero wakes up from his nightmare with Flare next to him in a completely different dynamic. Now, Kiaru sits down with her to enjoy a quick meal but his overpowered eye senses that the water is infected. Luckily, our hero makes use of his healing powers to create an antidote for the poison after swallowing the water. Later, he runs into a merchant named Redra Goldman, who is also suffering from the infected water. He offers his antidote and it works like a charm, causing the men to strike a deal with each other. Now, Kiaru takes Flare with him to purchase a slave for battle purposes. He isn't satisfied with what he sees at first, so the traitor takes him to some bruised good. Here, he spots Satsuna who is a beast girl from the Ice Wolf clan. Hiaru senses her desire for vengeance and decides to buy her as he can relate to her discomfort. At the inn, Kiaru rectifies Satsuna and goes through all her remembrances. He learns that her village was devastated by the evil soldiers of the Jural Kingdom as part of a plot to control the slave market. After making another trade with Goldman, 
Kioru and Flair decide that they should focus on enchanted weapons. They go back to Satsuna and resuscitate her but she slaps Kioru for using a kiss to make it work. He sends Flair to get some food and then he is confronted by Satsuna once again. However, he pins her down with ease and says that he will give her his powers if she promises to become his slave. He increases her vessel's power capacity after she agrees. At night, the triple couple makes their way to Satsuna's village where they see her ice wolves under attack by some evil mercenary. Kioru unleashes his epic sword powers to defeat them with ease, and then Flair uses her level 5 flame star to dominate her opponents with a raging passion. A thrilling sequence follows, and then Satsuna joins forces with her wolves to savagely kill the remaining soldiers. Kioru thinks about how polite Flair has become while Satsuna gazes upon the red moon to rejoice. Kioru spots the source of the infected water, and heals it after making Satsuna promise not to kill any innocent humans. Now, she tells her master her real name and submits to him for eternity. Meanwhile, the king reprimands Leonard for his past failures and orders him to kill Kiaru. After a steamy pool session, the triple couple runs into one of the surviving soldiers from the Ice Wolf village and end him with E. Now, Ridra tries to corner our heroes with some guards, but Kiaru exposes his true name to be Quinta. The greedy trader asks for the recipe to the antidote and our hero manages to make a decent deal out of it. However, he and his harem run into Kiraha who attacks them with her overpowered sword. The girls try to calm her down, but she defeats Flair with a finisher move, thus provoking Kiaru. He and Kiraha get into a fierce duel which seemingly looks intense at first. However, Kiaru is simply toying with her as he breaks her sword and mocks her dreams. Despite this, Kiraha overcomes everything and lands a blow on Kiaru, but once again, this was all part of his main plan. He proceeds to use his powers directly on Kira, which ends the battle with our hero as the undisputed winner. After his victory, Kiaru takes Kira to the inn and tells her that the king is exploiting her. Flair also drops by with her original face and deceives Kiraha into thinking that Kiaru had saved her from the evil castle. Now that she's on Kiaru's side, Kiraha makes it up to him while the other girls listen from outside. The next day, Leonard's imperial soldiers use Kiaru's village folk to lure him out. However, he doesn't give in and sends Kira to check up on it. She comes back with bad news, so Kiaru disguises himself as the soldier Murda and talks to one of the king's men. Unfortunately, he learns that Renard has dishonored Anna and becomes enraged. At night, he lures the villains into a room filled with neurotoxins and knocks them out. Then he turns Renard into a woman and gives him a taste of his own medicine. Despite this, our hero can't make it in time to save the one person he truly loved. Anna manages to offer one last smile before passing away, so Kiaru releases his frustration on the girls while Norn plots his own revenge plan. The next day, Kira informs the team about a planned execution at the Colosseum. She also mentions Norn and it worries Kiaru because she was the only one who had seen through his trickery when he was Flair's slave. The next day, Kiaru reaches the Colosseum and witnesses the king making a grand speech before executing the people of his village. Luckily, he reveals himself before anyone gets hurt. Kiaru is given an aggressive welcome but he makes fun of his opponents and gets attacked immediately. He easily takes down the first wave of opponents in a thrilling sequence and then he tells all the spectators his true story as a victim. However, the evil king continues to kill innocent villagers and tries to unleash a barrier on him. Luckily, our hero switches it around by summoning a projection of Flair with her original face. The princess exposes the Jural Kingdom for all its misconduct after which she unleashes an epic star flame to prove her identity. Then she urges the people of the kingdom to rebel, and it allows Kiaru to escape with a young survivor boy. Meanwhile, the public confronts the king and kills him along with his army. Back at the inn, Kiaru orders Goldman to raise the boy even if it means he will hate his savior all his life. Now, our heroes decide to visit the city of Branica and Kiaru asks Kiraha to stay behind and collect more information on Norn. Meanwhile, the wicked sister makes a plan with her slave John to attack her enemy. After an intense night, Kioru creates a staff that can be used to endure Flair's powers. The team reaches Branica and enter a bar where they enjoy a meal with a human and a demon. They learn that demons and humans live in peace over here because of the feudal demon king who reached a blood trade negotiation with the humans. Suddenly, a girl named Eve Reese enters the bar and sits with them. Kioru is shocked because he identifies her as the demon goddess from his past life, but decides to be calm for now. After some time, he says that the demon lord he met was from the Black Wing tribe but learns that it has been banned by the feudal king. Suddenly, the bar is attacked and Eve is stunned with a paralyzing arrow. Kioru convinces the queen to hire him for protection, and then he kills one of the demon assassins using his strength. After showing off his powers, he escapes on a raptor with the girls. 
Later, he has a chat with Eve and she becomes vigilant when he reveals himself to be a hero. Regardless, he offers a partnership in order to help her become the Demon Queen again. Eve resists him at first but asks for some time when he offers to save the survivors of her clan. The next morning, Reese wakes up to an awkward situation with Kiaru and the girls. She is ridiculed for being modest, and then Kiaru gives her some soup. As she enjoys her food, she is presented with a suggestion to get back the Philosopher's Stone and agrees to it after hearing the girls guaranteeing for Kiaru. Later, Eve tells her new partner about a godbird named Caladrius who has the ability to abolish an entire city with the flap of its wings. Kiaru gets excited upon hearing this and decides to face trials in order to find the demonic beast. Later, he sets out to collect information on the godbird but is attacked by one of the demon assassins. He takes him down easily after which he brings some gifts for the girls. Eve decides to leave the room to avoid another awkward scene and then Kiaru goes out with Satsuna to take care of the surviving assassin. They defeat the demons using their brutal skills and trap them in order to teach them a lesson. Later, Kiaru finds a nice inn where the beds are much better. He and the girls tease Eve some more and the next day, they go shopping for some weapons. The store owner, Carmen is amazed by Kiaru's powers and offers him a discount after which they become friends. However, Kiaru gets alerted when he notices Norn and Blade entering the town. He becomes emotional but is spotted by the elite warrior Trist Organ, who is also known as Hawkeye. Blade is shown to be a very shady character later in the night when she captures a female victim. Our heroes and Carmen have dinner together where Kiaru sorts out a fund for himself. However, Carmen tells him about Blade's wicked ways and mentions the bar she usually visits. Kiaru doesn't want to use the girls as bait for Blade, so he becomes a woman instead. The girls go wild after seeing him in such a cute form and get busy in front of Eve. After that, Flair puts some makeup on Kiaru and then he sets out on his assignment. He is attacked by some creepy goons on his way, but he takes them down with ease. Now, he goes to the bar and it doesn't take long for Blade to show up and flirt with him. She seemingly drugs Kiaru with a potion and he plays along even though it has no effect on him. However, they are stopped by the father of one of Blade's victims, so Kiaru wakes up and engages in a fierce duel with her. The battle wages on and Blade starts to struggle, so she boosts herself with the epic sword Ragnarok and dominates Kiaru for a bit. Our hero is eventually taken down and imprisoned by Blade in a surprising turn of events. However, this was also part of his plan and he stuns Blade with poisonous darts after she learns that her victim is a man. Kiaru uses his eye's powers to learn about Norm's plans to attack the town in three days, and then he places Blade into a hideous trap which ends with her getting eaten by some zombie men. After this, the Ragnarok sword transforms into an enchanted orb that our hero takes away. The next day, Kiaru meets Carmen but is challenged by Hawkeye who offers him a job after being awestruck by his aura. Kiaru sensibly rejects him as he knows Hawkeye is a dangerous killer. At the end, Kiaru realizes that he will need a divine weapon to defeat the elite assassin, so he absorbs the power of the sacred orb. It transforms into the sacred armor Georgius which can also grant immortality. Later at night, Norn announces to the people of Branica that she wants to kill all the demons living here. The public attacks her guards, so she uses this as an excuse to attack everyone in front of her. Unfortunately, the victims include Kant and it makes Kiaru even angrier as he has lost his only friend. The overpowered hero shows off his new immortality powers in front of Norn's army and defeats them with ease. Norn is informed about this and then Flair shows up as another projection. She tells the soldiers to give up their weapons and live in peace with the demon. The plan succeeds and the army abandons the mission to please their princess. Kiaru makes use of this opportunity to attack Norn, but is stopped by Hawkeye. They engage in a fierce battle filled with all kinds of epic moves, but it doesn't take long for our hero to take down his opponent with his sacred armor and its powers. With no one in his way, Kiaru kidnaps Norn and chains her up. He starts to reprimand her for killing Carmen, so she begs for her life, but then he mentions the Alban village as well. With no other choice, Norn agrees to play one of Kiaru's twisted games but loses very easily. As a result of this, he turns her into a girl named Al who will play the role of his stepsister. Kiraha comes to visit our heroes the next day, and is informed about everything that has happened so far. After engaging in a fantasy party with his new harem, Kiaru buys another raptor and visits Anna's grave to seek some solace. He remembers his motivations to get revenge on Bullet and carries on with his journey. The end. Like, share, and subscribe if you want me to cover more recaps like this. I